I feel like this problem was one of the hardest problems I've ever approached in terms of adding sequences of fractions. It can be evaluated quickly using some common techniques um, that, that evaluate series like this. Uh, and you know, from that perspective, if you have a quick algorithm already, it's not so difficult. But I like to kind of always step back and think about it intuitively and think about it uh, as, a, as a middle school teacher. How can you solve it uh, without knowing advanced series techniques? What would you do? Well, you know, with a problem like this, we're adding a half and then a sixth and then a twelfth and a twentieth and then dot, dot, dot. We don't even know really, I, I think, when we first look at this, what is the pattern? But it, whatever this pattern is, it's telling us keep going until you reach 1 over 9,900. Well, first of all, we've got to establish the pattern. And the, and the way I'm going to do that is by modeling or or breaking up and chunking this, this sequence to look for some kind of pattern. So let me just add the first two terms. What is a half, right, and a sixth? Right, so if we add these two up, we should get two thirds, right? A half is equal to three sixths, and add it to one sixth, and we get four sixths, which is two thirds. So, you know, when you're modeling like this, when you're breaking a problem up, you should save some area for scratch work like I'm doing here, but also set up a clean area so you can quickly identify patterns. So my area over here, I'll put one half plus one sixth equals two thirds. All right, doesn't help me yet, but let's keep going. What if I was to add um, a half and a sixth and a twelfth, right? So I'm gonna add the first three terms. So the largest, common de largest denominator here is 12. So I'm gonna use that as a common denominator. One half is equal to six twelfths, right? So equals six twelfths. A sixth in terms of twelfths, I've got a double numerator and denominator, I get two twelfths, and plus one twelfth. If I add those up, I get nine twelfths, right? Which is three fourths, right? We reduce. So in my space over here, we know that if we have a half and a sixth and a twelfth, we get three fourths. But you know, I'm, I'm running out of room here, so let me move this. Um, one of my biggest issues in solving these problems is always finding clean space on my paper. Uh, but that's okay. So now, again, here we have a half and a sixth and a twelfth. And we get three-fourths. Let's do a couple more and see if something clicks here. So next, let's look at a half and a sixth right, and a twelfth and a twentieth. Okay. So, so what's this going to equal now? Now, now we want to deal, uh, we want to find a least common denominator between 2, 6, 12, and, and 20. So I'm going to look at the biggest two numbers first, pair those up, and see if the smaller numbers fit. So I know 12 and 20 both go into 60, and then I check 2 and 6, they also do as well. I'm going to use 60ths. So 20ths, I'll start with the largest first as 60ths, triple numerator and denominator, 3 60ths. For 12th, 12th, multiply numerator and denominator by 5, 5 60ths. For 6th, multiply it by 10, 10 60ths. And for half, by 30, 30 60ths. So 30 60ths plus 10 60ths plus 5 plus 3. And here, this is 45 48 60ths. And if you reduce this, Right, you can cut them both back in half. We get 24 thirtieths. And half again, we get 12 fifteenths. And then we divide both by three, we get four fifths. So actually, we're, we almost have a pattern that's almost easily visible. But let me go back to yellow so we can see it. And we can almost see it, I think. One half plus one sixth plus one twelfth plus one twentieth equals four fifths. So the first thing I noticed was that um, in this sequence, look at the numerator and denominators. You go two to three, three to four, four to five. And you can predict that the next one is five sixth, right? Which it is. But what do we have to add to get five sixth? What would the next fraction be in the sequence? Let's look at our pattern. We have a half. Sorry, I want to use a different color. Color coding is actually pretty helpful. So here we have a half and a sixth. So what happened, what changed here? Well, I added four to the denominator. Okay, All right, it went from two plus four is six, and then one twelfth, what happened there? Well, then I added two more than four, I added six. 
And then what? Well, with the 20th, I added 8 from 12. So 2 more than 6 is 8. What am I going to add next? What's the next fraction in the sequence going to be? Well, it's going to be 1 30th, right? Because I'm going to add 10 to the next fraction. And altogether, you can check it. If we add these, we do get 5 sixths. So how does this help us, right? Because we don't, have to want, we don't want to have to write out all these fractions. And we don't want to have to go through this whole sequence even though we see a pattern. What's the other pattern? Uh, what's another pattern that we can use to deduce what must happen, right, in this long, long sequence? Well, I noticed that, you know, I'm, I'm pretending these smaller chunks. If I'm just adding a half and a sixth, I know that 2 times 3 is 6. So that's useful. Let's check the next one. If I had a half and a sixth and a twelfth, I notice that three times four is twelve. And it keeps going. Four times five is twenty. Five times six is thirty. So what does that mean? So before we get to the algebra, let's extend this reasoning to what they gave us. You know, if we, if we look at the way uh, the series is set up, um, we want to utilize this idea. Five times six is thirty. Four times five is twenty. So we can just rewrite the way these fractions are, are written. We'll use this last one right here. Instead of 1 over 30, if I thought of it as 1 over 5 times 6, right, then it makes the answer a little bit easier to think about because really 1 over 5 times 6 becomes 5 over 6 when we add up all these fractions. What about 1 over 20? Well, that was just 1 over 4 times 5, right? And then what about 1 over 12? Well, that's 1 over 3 times 4. And what, a, oops, what about 1 over 6? Well, 1 over 6 is just 1 over 2 times 3. And what about one half? Well, it's one over what? One over one times two. So this is a little bit easier to think about now because if we add up to the 30th, this is the 30th right here, what happens? Well, if we add up to the 30th, we get one over five, one over five times six, and the answer is five over six. When we add up to the 20th, the 20th is one over four times five, so the answer is just four over five. So what are, what are we going up to in the sequence? Well, we're going all the way up to Right, I'll write this out, 1 over 1 times 2 plus 1 over 2 times 3 plus dot 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 all the way up to let's put this 9900. So they picked a nice easy number to think about. 9900 is equal to 99 times 100. So we're ending up at this fraction right here. So based on the pattern, this must be equal to what? Well, 99 is a numerator, just like 5 was here and here, over 100. So algebraically, you know, if we go, if we start at 1 over 1 times 2 and then, you know, add all the way up to 1 over some number, what are we always multiplying by? Well, the number, when we went up to uh, 30, we multiply by 1 over 5 times 6. When we went up to 1 over 20, we multiply by 4 times 5. So the second number we're multiplying by is always 1 more than the first. So we're going up to a number 1 over x times x plus 1. And that, you know, this actually tells us that algebraically we can always do this because this will equal what? Well, the first number is x over x plus 1. And this is true. And this is a great, this is a great problem to prove by induction. And maybe I'll show that in another video, but I'm, I've certainly spoken enough in this one. So this is, let's just reflect. you got a really nasty looking series or fraction. Break it up in pieces. So we did here and evaluate it. You know, here we're evaluating by brute force, looking through each step. And then here we're laying out the results to look for a pattern. And the first pattern we found, right, wasn't that helpful. Two to three, three to four, four to five. But it became helpful because I wanted to use the last fraction in each of these to connect them to these numerators and denominators. And just making an observation that numerator times denominator gives you the denominator in the last fraction of the sequence of 5 times 6 is 30, helps unlock this problem. And then, you know, eventually it leads up to the algebraic uh, understanding as well. All right, this is tough, but I hope uh, it helped. Thanks.